All right, Arthur and Coco. Arthur and Coco, where are you guys from originally? I'm from Houston, Texas. Houston? And I'm from Florida. What part of Florida? Oh, Panama City. Let's start with how you guys met. We met on a metro bus in Houston, Texas, in Greens Point. Whenever she was looking for a social security office and uh, I shot my hand up like a little kid <laughs> on the bus and uh, her face turned red. She sat down with her phone in her face and I remember everybody on the bus looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with that guy? Like, you, know? you guys yeah. been together for how long? Five, five years. years. Five years. Mm -hmm. yeah, five years. Yeah. yeah. And you've been on the streets for a lot of that? Uh, actually, yeah. 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 For like half of half of our relationship, 90% of our relationship, actually, we've been on the streets for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, or barely off the street, like in a motel somewhere yeah. because one of us managed to pull a job or, mm -hmm. you know, or we had a business moving, moving help for a little while, you know, so, you know, it's, it's always something to help keep us afloat just a little bit, you yeah. know. Is it difficult being a couple and being in that situation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, especially with, you know, with our addiction that we have to. Insecurities, all that good stuff. We have, um, we're, we're addicted to fentanyl. Both of us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are staying in tents or? Uh, right, right now we're staying at a room, a small room, but we're yeah. fixing to be out on the streets again. So yeah, we're fixing to The work's to be about staying. to run out. I'm doing work for the motel right now in order for a place to stay. But once that runs out, you know, that's just the next two days I'll be done. Actually, uh, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow is Sunday. Yeah, well, Monday then we'll be out. So. Yeah. What do you guys do for money normally? Whatever, Whatever I can. Yeah, I look it on Craigslist. Uh, I look I'll up anything. <laughs> <laughs> I get on Craigslist and uh, you know I look for for anything that pops up for for cash drop for the day, you know, or yeah. and try and try and get down the bus, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, we've but, done our share of you know stealing from our families to you know, you know all that good stuff. We've uh, done all of it. Yeah, it's hard to gain trust back after you know you do stupid yeah. shit like that. But, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you guys don't look like fentanyl addicts. Yeah, we don't, but that's that's, that's how that's we miracle. that's how we managed to get the scheme going to where we can do our fix. You know what I'm saying? Because looks can be deceiving. Yeah. You know, not everybody looks like they're on drugs whenever they are. In the know? past two years, there hasn't been one day where I well, but in the last three weeks since I got to you know, since I've been in LA since I've been here, it's been rougher to get it for me. But in mm -hmm. Houston. Every day. Florida. Every, every day. day. Every day. Yeah, because you know, there was a day hard. I didn't have to be without it. I could go. I needed it after work. I wouldn't do it before work, but when I got home from work, I would do it. So I, I used could to relax. pimp girls out, the females out to, you know, to Johns and stuff. So to beat my habit as well, you know, I've done my share of horrible things. I've robbed men you know, that yeah. would try to pick me up thinking I was a prostitute. I've robbed them. Yeah, I've done my fair share of crime too to, to feed my addiction, you know, but it wasn't always fentanyl, it was pills at first, you know, yeah. but. I've done crack, you know, yeah. Yeah, pills, you know, hard uh, meth. Meth, Have you guys yeah. OD'd before? Oh yeah. Oh yes, plenty of times. Yeah. I've OD'd like three times. Been, He's I'm, OD'd in front of me, I've had to bring him back. I, I've been faithful enough to be able to wake up later. Yeah, you know, but uh, my or kid, have someone I have a next kid. to me that, that, you know, brings me back. Yeah, I have a kid that had saw me on OD, unfortunately. Yeah, that wasn't a very good thing to see, but yeah. Tell me about how you guys grew up. Oh, I got taken away from my mom, um, actually. Um, I grew up with my dad. Um, in Jacksonville, Florida, um, he actually, I was four years old whenever I got taken away. He, he used to rape me. I was raped all the way from four until I was like, I wanna say 18, I've been raped all by, my life. By your Seriously, father. literally whole, my whole life by my mom's boyfriends, by my boyfriends in general, you know? Yeah, I've been through it all. So your mom kind of allowed it yeah, oh, absolutely, she did. Absolutely, yeah. Blamed her for it. Yeah, blame me for it. Yeah, he's met my mom. You oh, know. man, oh my God. That's a yeah. wonderful piece of work of a human being right She there. tried to pit me out in front of him to her friends. <laughs> she yeah. is another level crazy, but you mm -hmm. know, it is what it is. 
yeah, my, my early childhood, you know, I was always trying to stick around by my mom. She would drive me to the worst places. I would see bar fights, uh, wrecks, people get shot at. Them coming home drunk and robbed with beating from the head and a bullet hole in the side of the van, asking them what the hell happened here, you know? And, and then one day uh, I woke up whenever I was 12 and uh, I heard my mom knocking at the door. I know she was drunk. And uh, I remember I, maybe I shouldn't open that door. You know, I told myself, just, just, maybe she'll just go away. Well, she went around to the front door because my, my room had one door and then there was a front door. And then she got into an altercation with my, her, mom, her boyfriend's mom and she got shot with a 38 in the stomach. So, yeah, I heard the pow. It had to be the one to call 911. She survived. Yeah, she survived. Yeah, she was bleeding on the couch trying to hold it in while I was dialing 911 and the cops came. And uh, I remember the thing that, that stuck with me the most was whenever they asked me what happened, I tried to tell them. But everything that came out of my mouth was just a cry. I couldn't explain to them. And I used to see their, their eyes tear up and that stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. You guys think that the trauma that you guys went through as young kids is kind of the connection that you have as adults? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but I've done rehabs. I've done, you know, self, you know, reflection. I've done, you know, uh, yeah, no, no, meditation. <laughs> you know, it does help. You know, don't get me wrong. It does Not help. It, it, it always gave me something, a different way to look at it, you know. But uh, the reality of it all is that I'm a junkie, you know. Do you think you'll be using the rest of your life? I hope not. Uh, like, but once again, the reality of the way it feels. Yeah. Right. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, you might, you might, might be the rest of my life. You know, always a chunk of my money going somewhere else just to be able to maintain. You know, just I don't know, like a transfer of energy or something. Right. So. What's your biggest regret? Not taking my time and doing things the right way. You right. know, always trying yeah. to rush through shit. You know. Yeah. That's my biggest regret. Mine's not having not enough time. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. And now that we're getting older, we're um, we're both thirty eight years old. You know, it's 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 like it's like a it's like something you know you're never gonna get back. You know what I mean? Like you can get money back, you can get you know friends back, can't get time back. You know. What's your biggest regret, Coco? Um, <laughs> a little bit of everything, really. Um going down this road, you know, not having the proper parenting, you know, growing up, just everything, you know? You know, I just wish sometimes my life was different, but it is what it is, you know, I'm okay with it, I guess. You have one child? I have three, actually. You have three? <laughs> yeah. Who's raising them? Um, they're actually all teenagers, so um, my sister has two of them and then one of them's grown as an adult so did you raise any of them i did actually um until covid covid hit and then i kind of lost them yeah due to everything displacement yeah so but yeah what kind of uh, emotions do you guys go through Living well, the whole point of getting high is to try to run from those emotions. You exactly. Know? Yeah. So you don't feel it. <laughs> now, now that, now that I'm not as high as I once once was. You know, it's yeah. I'm feeling a lot, lot more than I, I'm used to feeling. You know, yeah, and, for real. Because yeah, we get so high to where we don't. That's that's the whole point of getting high. So you don't feel anything. Yeah, so you don't, you don't think shit. about nothing. I've been running from that for my whole damn life. You know, I've been running from all kinds of different shit. Uh, shit yeah. Shit that I'm ashamed of. Shit that I'm. You know, uh -huh. things I don't like about myself, you know, it's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just one medication that just helps, yeah. you know, it's like a fix all, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you have a hard time sleeping, go to sleep, you it know, helps like you sleep. Yeah, but it helps you do a lot of shit, helps you get through the day. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. What would you guys say are your greatest fears? Dying, ODing, for L real, for real. Like, losing her. Losing her. That's my biggest fear. Yeah, dying. Pretty much. I mean, sometimes I don't care, but 
Me, man, I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? But her, that but would I, suck. Would you guys say you have self-destructive streaks in you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <Tons. I'm a laughs> we mother. tried <laughs> to self-destruct to break up. You know, we tried to split up. You know what I'm saying? Like we, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think us together we make at least partial functional human being you know what i mean i think yeah. but both of us trying you know but you know that the yeah. uh, time to be a little bit more than that i guess what would you say it is about coco that 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 you're attracted to that, that you love she's the other half of me man she's like like everything that i'm not she is like she's my twin flame <laughs> right and coco what would you say about arthur he has strengths where I don't, you know, where, like, I give up more easily to where he won't. He's more of the pusher, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm just like, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I'll go to work sick. I don't give a fuck. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I got to do. You know, you know I'll make sure that, that we got something later. You know, so it's a, no, it's not as, are we going to have something? No, he's going to work and he's going to get something, yeah. you know, so. I mean, I mean, I, think, I guess that's an admirable character in a junkie, you know, but whatever. <laughs> that's what it is. We should all be so lucky. What's been your lowest point? Mm, the lowest, where we used to shoot up. Yeah, we, we, have, uh, we, we haven't shot up in a do, while. Yeah, we, I have my marks and scars still. Yeah, though, we but. don't do needles no more. You smoke? Yes. No, we were snort. We were snorters. Yeah, we snort. We, but, oh, yeah, as long we as it gets to, into our system, we're good. I don't need no fast track. I don't yeah, need no cheats in life. I know. would say that would be the lowest is when yeah. we were shooting up. It the got... The was, was the bad... Was bad. The hell. It was hell. We, yeah, we've lost everything due to a needle. We've lost our homes. We've, we've actually chose to get high over food, feeding ourselves. You know what I'm saying? It That would be, I would say, the lowest of the low. You know what I'm saying? Is the high different when you're... It is. The Actually, highest. Actually, it feels like you get higher when you snort it to me. Like, it you get, like you get used to it too quick too. with the needle. And then you need more and more and more quicker and faster. Uh -huh. And you get build a tolerance real quick with, with snorting it for me. I mean, I, it just... It feels lasts as longer. Yeah, it just stays where it needs to be. See you tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't need no more today, you know? Like, I, I found a rhythm, you know? Yeah. But like like everything else that a junkie would say, you know, could all fall apart anytime. Right. <laughs> you know? But yeah, to me, it's it lasts as longer whenever you snort it than it does if you shoot it. Because like he said, like, whenever I used to shoot it, I would have to, I would start getting sick, like, probably like 30 minutes after I done shot up you know what i'm saying and then i would need another one and then i would need to end it but once i snort it i can do like you can a maintain. line you maintain yeah you can do day. like a line as they would call it and then you're good you know Instead and of we, we've had when we had we've had days where we've gone through whole grounds of dope you know now we're barely going to what 20 of your other day yeah. you know it's more like a mental thing now that i'm starting to see but you know it's still we all have our crutches you know we do bad crutch. Oh, I enjoy the high. I do. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know lie either. I enjoy it too. Like like I that old friend, it. you know, like that old it friend's is. always been there. You know? Uh huh. It helps you forget and you know everything. And when you don't got it, you just feel weird without it. Like you out do. of place. You do. You, you know, like you don't feel normal at all. You don't. Yeah, you feel really out of place. You just. It's only you feel comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, you don't at all. Where would you guys like to be in five years? Honestly, uh, the whole point of coming out here to LA was to not give up on ourselves. You know, it's just, we told ourselves that if we were to come out here, we we're gonna give it our all. Even if we were to end up on the street, we we're gonna keep pushing forward, uh -huh, you know? No matter what. No matter what, make, make something happen. Make you something. Know? Not, not for anybody else, but ourselves. You know just what I mean? Just for ourselves. Once you're addicted to fentanyl, it's gonna be hard for you to do things like get yeah. a job and. Yeah, yeah. It well, is. I, I, it I, I, is. I know. I know some it successful. Is. I know some successful people that are on drugs. You know, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it is what it is. You know, it Some, is. sometimes you need a little aid, a little kick in the, in the ass. You know, a little yeah. change. You can't really have anything being on drugs, but because I mean, I don't know no successful stories, but not anybody successful went on drugs. <laughs> what do you think? Most people don't understand about addiction. The mental 
it's the the mental that makes it's, us go to that point. It's not just where, putting it down either. I yeah. mean, you can't just say put it down and walk away. I mean, it, yeah, it's it, like it's, it's like a hold. Like you, you know what what it takes to not feel like that. You know, and once you once you've done it, and, you know, and, it's like. And if people's never really been through what you've been through, or you know, people have different ways of dealing with stuff that happens to them that tragic. You know, some people can, see like me, I've never done therapy. I've never done none of that. You know what I'm saying? I've tried it, but it just wasn't for me. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I can't. Yeah, I don't know. It's just people just don't understand the mental fact of the addiction. You know, it's just not as easy. It's not like, oh, my God, go to therapy and then everything will be fine. It's not like that, you know? And when someone's been through the abuse that you went through as a young girl. Yeah, there's really no coming back. You, you, you just need yeah. to. Yeah, it's like every time you lay down and close your eyes, that's all you see. It's constant replay, you know? She has moments where she hates me because of what happened to her as a kid. Like, she'll turn on me. i become a man hater. Yeah, she'll yeah. turn into a man hater and she'll just turn on me. And I'll be like, whoa, what the fuck did that come from? You know, like. But, I do. Well, I have to, that's part of who she is, though. You know, I have to accept it. You know. Coco, can you imagine if that had never happened and you had a, a loving pair of parents? Um, do I think my life would be different? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. What would you guys say is the most important lesson you've learned in your lives? Not to give up. To care more. Uh, like, I used to not care about a lot of things until I met her. And I started seeing, like, being emotionally detached from things isn't the way to live life, you know? Yeah. All right. Arthur and Coco, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Hope you get a room tonight or tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs>